Hi, this is Jim Bergner with True Tech Tools. Today we're going to go over a couple new analyzers, the Testo 310 and the Testo 320. Show you guys some of the highlights and features and how these new instruments are used. Okay, so let's see what comes in the box here. And this is a 310 printer kit. So with it we get the 310 analyzer. It's got a permanently attached uh, probe assembly, uh, complete with a probe stop and the, and the filter access in the back. Uh, a combination USB cable and charger cable and a, power, a uh, transformer power supply. A new 0554-3100 printer. This is a new printer for Testo. It only works with the 310 uh, combustion analyzer and a uh, silicone hose that slips over the probe assembly to measure gas pressures along with some uh, little accessories like uh, extra filters here and also a, uh, a roll of thermal paper. The Testo 310 is really a whole new class of instruments for Testo. And in this little rugged compact housing, you get a lot of features that you wouldn't expect in an instrument in this price class. Uh, this instrument will do O2, CO, draft, plus all the calculations like excess air and efficiency. So you really get everything you would in a full-blown combustion analyzer in this small compact unit. Uh, they did some inter interesting things for Tesla that we've never seen before. One of them they did is they built the probe, uh, the, the probe assembly into the unit, so it's no longer a two-piece assembly. Probably did that to, uh, to save some cost in the unit, which is really uh, you know, a pretty nice way of doing it. They have it connected, so it does save you a step of having to connect that, and also you don't have to worry about having loose connections. They also used a monochrome display. It's a five-line display. Really only two of the lines are, are active, and we'll zoom in on this in a minute so you can see this a little bit closer. But they have a really easy to see uh, backlit display, uh, integrated water trap with a really easy to open spout and empty out, and a nice probe assembly with a filter built into the back so we can easily service the filter in there, put that right back into place, and also the, uh, the tapered cone stop so we can put it into the stack and position the probe where we want it. Okay, when you first look at the Testo 310, you're going to notice that there's some fixed characters on the display up here on the top. And those are simply for combustion test, ambient CO, draft, and, and pressure. We have a five-line display, so there's you know, the top line, the two lines for the uh, two lines for our selections of what we're going to watch as far as the, uh, the flue gas analysis, our soft key selections in the bottom, and then our, our operation on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and power this guy up here, and you got to press and hold the power key in for a second to get it to come on. When it comes on, I just popped on the backlight there, it shows the firmware ver version and the date and time, and now we're going to go through and, uh, and uh, go through our initial warm-up and calibration period. So you can see right here our pump is running, we're flashing one, and you can see the, the flame symbol here. This is, means that it's a gas. We don't know what number one is yet until we go in here, and I'll show you how that works here in our battery indicator. So if I hit the uh, arrow here on the left, you can see it shows me my instrument temperature, press it again, it shows me my fuel selection. And if I use my up and down arrows, I can switch between natural gas, propane gas, fuel oil number two, bioheat number five. And you can see here it's bioheat's in oil and it's showing an oil here. Uh, wood, showing the blocks of wood up here now, 20% moisture, or back to natural gas again. When I hit the right arrow again, I can see my pressure selections, which I can switch from inches H2O to hectopascals, to PSI, millimeters of water column, back to inches H2O, hit it again, I have my selection between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius, then I hit OK, and I go back to my uh, internal instrument temperature. Now across the top, what I want to do here is select what kind of a test do I want to do. So initially here, what I want to select is I want to go into a flue gas analysis, that's what I have here on the top, if I wanted to switch, all I'd have to do is press the, uh, the left right arrow key. You can see that goes into the house right now, so I'm on an ambient CO test, then my draft test, then my pressure test, and then back to a uh, flue gas test, and I'll show you how each one of these is done. So it's a really, really intuitive, very simple to use instrument. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll put this into uh, some stack gas and let's see how it works. So while we're uh showing you the 310 and how it works. I thought I'd just mention this in passing. Get a lot of questions on how to uh, make a penetration in a PVC pipe like when it goes up through a roof and you don't have access to it outside. This is my preferred method. I like to use a brass plug, a tapered pipe plug, 
and you can see you know this is a tapered so it's gonna it's gonna go in a long ways it's gonna seal up that hole real nice because obviously as, it, as we tighten it in the taper wedges in to the pipe and holds it snug it's easy to get in get out and uh, pretty tamper resistant and now I can take my cone here and I can thread the cone right into the uh, into the PVC pipe and it's just gonna bite on the first few threads you can see that locks in and holds and now what I want to do is slide this all the way to the back of the pipe and then I'll pull it back about halfway and I'm ready to make a combustion measurement. Okay, so I've got the instrument running in the stack and typically I don't like to uh, put an analyzer in a furnace to see light off CO on a gas furnace, but just for the sake of some of you guys that want to see the response time, uh, we're going to do it. And you can see here I've got the O2 showing CO and the burner just lit off. So we'll get an idea how fast the response time is. And there we go, our, there's our spike CO reading going up, O2 dropping off. You see this thing's got a very, very fast response time uh, in the instrument. It's you know, primarily because we got a short gas path, we got a short, we got a short hose, and uh, we're right across the cells and in, into the instruments. So you know, we're gonna see this O2 drop off, and you know, the CO should start to drop down now simply because this is light off CO. And we've got to let the appliance, before we really do a full combustion test, you've got to let it run for a few minutes and warm up. This is pretty normal characteristic of a gas furnace to have a little bit of high CO at light off and then to work its way down. So we're going to let that go that way. Now when you're looking at the display here, some things I want you to notice are, you know, right away we're doing a combustion test. So I'm in the, the, the arrow right here is in the combustion gas. I can, I can, I can, if I stop this test, I can scroll to one of the other readings. I'm going to leave it run right now, but we're in number one fuel selection, which is natural gas. And really, uh, what I have it now is two selections that I can move up and down. The top part, if I move, push the up arrow, it's only going to change the top part of the display. So in the top part here, I scroll up, I can see O2. I can see the, the temperature of the stack. I can see my CO, and this is ambient CO, that's what the home symbol's for. I can see my pressure in inches of water column if I were to have measured that. I can see my pressure too in inches of water column if I had like a gas pressure and a draft pressure. And then I can see my undiluted CO and you can see that's still trending downward. We'll have to give that a few more minutes. And then back to O2. On the bottom part of the display I have CO. I have my efficiency calculation. I have my uh, in instrument temperature. Excess air. And then my CO2. And then back to CO. So it's a fairly simple instrument to use to do a combustion analysis. We, get, you know, we look at the two at a time. My soft keys are on the bottom right now. The only thing I do is stop this combustion test if I want to stop it. But if I wanted to know what my undiluted CO is, I scroll across the top here to get the CO undiluted. So now I'm down below 100 ppm undiluted CO, which is where I should be. And let's say I want to look at my excess air and I'm at 50% excess air, which is like an ideal target for this type of appliance. So you can see, very, very, very simple to use instrument. Uh, not a whole heck of a lot to it. Got the backlight button here. Turn this on, my escape key, which will take me back out of the combustion test. If I push start again, it'll, it'll restart that test. Now if I push stop, the difference between stop, escape and stop is when I push stop, now all that information is, is recorded here. So now if I scroll through there, I can see my CO2, my CO, my efficiency, my uh, instrument temperature, excess air, back to CO2. Um, same thing on the top, O2, temperatures, pressures, and back to undiluted CO. So very, very simple, very intuitive, very easy to use instrument. All right, so now let's say I want to change the mode here. Right now, again, we're in combustion mode, and I want to go over here and measure the pressure in the stack here. So all I have to do is hit the left-right arrow key, which really only moves a single direction here, and I'm going to go over with fast MECO to stack pressure. Now I have to obviously remove this so I can null the pressure temperature or zero it out. I'm going to push start. It's going to go through a five-second countdown. It's going to show me temperature and pressure. And now you can see my, my pressure sensor here. This is tens, hundreds, thousands of an inch. So it's pretty normal to see that bouncing around again. It's going to pick up little, little pressure uh, movements in just the room. I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the stack here. And you can see I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a pressure reading. It's bouncing around quite a bit because I'm near the inducer motor on this thing. When I push stop now, that reading is recorded. And if I scroll through my readings, I can see that draft is recorded as P1. 
So if I scroll through my readings here, I'm going to get. Uh, oops, I got to go back to combustion testing here. Sorry about that. We go back to combustion testing. So I'm back to combustion test. If I scroll through my readings now, you can see that P1 now is recorded as draft in my inches H2O. If I want to take and record these readings, I've got a, a uh, wireless printer right here. I push the print key, and you can see now it's flashing the print icon on the top, and that printer is starting to print out the, the results of the combustion test. So really, really simple, easy to use. Uh, we'll let this thing finish printing out here, and I'll show you what the combustion test results look like. All right, so this is a printout off the Testo 310. You can see it printed out the, the model, the analyzer, the firmware version, the serial number. Gave you a little place here to put your company name and address, the date and time the test was taken, and then obviously the fuel, and all the other, all the other uh, combustion test parameters that we measured, uh, O2, CO, flue gas efficiency, ambient CO, ambient temp. You can see here where there's dash lines, that's because we simply didn't take the, the reading of ambient CO and record that. Same thing here with differential pressure. If I would have used this to set maybe the fuel pressure, I could have the three and a half inches of water column recorded here. So you can see it's very easy to use. Uh, gave us all the information we need for a customer printout. You might print a second copy of this out and then uh, attach it to your work order and then you know, leave one with a furnace with a customer. So it makes it very simple to use, very, uh, you know, very easy to record and uh, show due diligence in doing combustion testing and in how you left the appliance operating. In this price class, you'll really be hard pressed to find a better instrument than the Testo 310. What really separates it from the pack is the built-in manometer. With the built-in manometer, we're able to measure our fuel pressure relative to the atmosphere, and we're also able to measure draft. The Testo 310 does all the basic calculations you're gonna need. So it does your efficiency, your CO undiluted, your excess air, it allows you to do a full tune-up on any, com any kind of combustion appliance that you're working on, whether it's gas, oil, wood, or even bioheat oil. The 310 we found was very simple and intuitive to use. It's, uh, like I said, for its price class, for what it costs, for what it does, uh, we really think it's one of the best instruments out there. So take a look at the 310. I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. This is Jim Bergman for True Tech Tools. Thanks a lot for watching.